Welcome. I'm Darren Bell. I'm your instructor for the Principles of Financial Accounting class and we are going to do uh, an overview and help explain the financial analysis project that you're going to be doing this term. So first thing I want to show you here is exactly uh, how to find a company. How to find a company and how to find their financial information. So let's go ahead and look on here. So I went on Google and I just typed in, I just searched for US public companies. And so here's a bunch of results here of lists and things you can find. We're gonna go into the sec.gov, the SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission is the governing body over public companies. So here's a list of all public companies here. Right, so we should be able to pick any of these companies and go out and find their financial information. And so let's go ahead and pick one here. Um, Sinta's Corporation. Let's go ahead and pick that one. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this one in here. And most of these companies have a website. Okay, so there's the website for this. A company it's corporate apparel so they do corporate apparel like uniforms so they're the uniform company okay uh, so we're gonna click in here there they are it looks like a nice website here okay and so what we're gonna do here now that we're on their main website is we're gonna be looking for investor information so these companies uh, need to be posting their financial information for investors and so we're gonna look typically that's going to be down here on the bottom is where it's going to be. Uh, see right there, see that link right here, investor information. So that's going to be information for us. And so they're going to uh, do their um, results and everything. So we should be able to uh, go into here and look at their most recent information about their investors here. Let's see if we can go in here. Uh, okay, so now we're in the investors section here, and it looks like this is the most recent information that they have. What we're going to want to find is we are going to want to find their uh, annual reports. And so that's going to be here. We're going to be able to look under uh, investor alerts. So investor is kind of the main key term you're going to want to know. Uh, we can sign up for their emails. We don't want that. Here we go. Right up here, we see this. This is their financial reports uh, is what we're gonna be looking at here. So let's go ahead and click on financial reports. Some of these companies, you're gonna be able to find investor relations right off and they'll have a whole page of investor relations for the companies. Uh, for example, if I go to, let's just say for example, uh, Ford Motor Company, right? So I type in Ford here. I go to the main uh, Ford website, if I can find it here. Uh, let's see, that first one wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, that's actually, it looks like a marketing site right there, but we'll go ahead and, and look here. Ford.com is probably where I could go as well. Of course, all of these companies, they're gonna wanna sell you stuff, of course. Right, and so uh, some of their main landing pages are definitely going to be sales pages or going to be their products uh, and not necessarily geared towards investors. But, like I said, again, if you go down towards the bottom, let's see on Ford Motor Company, uh, let's look for it right there. There we go, right here at the bottom, there is Investor Center, and we can go to uh, the Ford Motor Company and look at. What we're looking for again, we are looking for their uh, filings and their their annual report. So SEC filings, we could look at that. Uh, every quarter, right here, we see every quarter they filed their financials for the, for the, um, the quarter up to date, right? Which is the 10Q that they have to file. Uh, their annual report is the 10K. And so what I want you to find is their most current annual, which is their, gonna be their 10K or their annual, re annual report is what we're looking for here. So we're looking for a 10K, uh, we're looking for annual filings, 
and for 20, it'll be 2022 is going to be their most recent, right? Because we're just getting into 2023. So there's their annual report. This is for Ford. If we go back to Cintas that we were doing before here, if we click on their financial reports, uh, we're going to be able to find, it looks like, there it is right here. So here's their annual reports here and their Form 10K that they're going to have that's going to have all of the up-to-date most recent year financial reports for the most recent year and so that's what we're going to be looking at on there so you're going to pull that open that's where all your information is going to be uh, typically they have it either in HTML or they have PDFs that are downloadable and we're going to be able to find we're going to look in here and we're going to find their financial uh, statements is what we're going to be looking for here right there at the very end exhibits and financial statement schedules so that's going to be all the way down on page 69 all this other stuff you may uh, browse through it and read through it that's going to be a bunch of information about the company so that's going to be part of your financial analysis as well um, but a lot of the uh, quantitative information we're going to be doing is going to be from their uh, financial reports and so the financial reports are going to be here towards the end there we go so there's some of them here looks like we're we're gonna find them here and so that we'll, we'll look at look for their financial reports there and it looks like let's see here statement of stock shareholders equity Looks like this is the balance sheet, comparable uh, comparative balance sheet, 2020 to 2021. And then uh, we've got income. Sometimes it says comprehensive income. That's a little something different. Or it'll say consolidated, right? Consolidated, the income statement, that means that this company has, is the parent company, right? And so we're consolidating all of their maybe sub companies and other related companies together into one. And so that is going to give you a 2019 through 2021. And so a lot of, on these as we are doing these, um, some of the 2022 information is out there. Um, they have to issue it. It may not be uh, for another month or two. So we're going to go with the most recent. So if it's not 2022 stuff, that's okay. Just go with it. We're going to go with it. And... Um, we'll use the the numbers there so uh, that is how to find the annual report and the financial information for a company so let's look back here real quick and also how to find the company right so we did the list from the SEC and how to do those things uh, let me walk you through real quick what we're doing here for the financial analysis Okay, so this is going to be a project. We're going to have a draft that's going to be due um, and uh, at about midterm. So look at your look at the Canvas course and the due dates on that. So when that one's due, and then we're going to also have a final submission that'll be on week ten, uh, right there before finals week. So for that, uh, you're going to uh, just have a smaller piece for the draft. Right, we're not going to do an entire financial analysis with all of these six uh, points we're gonna mainly focus on the uh, overview and the evidential matter for the draft and I'll show you what those are here but this is basically the different sections of your financial analysis this is how it should be structured the first one is that should be when you submit your final uh, uh, the final analysis you should have an executive summary up at the top it's going to be short it'll be a summary right it'll just be short and it'll focus on just the most important pieces of analysis and conclusion so this is pretty common with business documents you're gonna write your document basically you're gonna write all the other sections and then at the end you are going to summarize it at the beginning of the paper so this is typically the thing that you write last and you put at the at the beginning of the paper 
So it's kind of just a, it's a little bit of a paradox, right? So you're going to write the paper, you're going to have your final thing, every, everything due, or it, when it, uh, before it's due, you're going to get that executive summary, just a, a brief paragraph on the most important results. Uh, so this is not going to be part of your draft. This will be part of the final. We're going to have analysis overview. This is going to be the background of the company. When did it start? How did it grow, right? What, what's the history of the company? Where did it come from? What, what kind of products and services does it sell? Um, how does it make its money, right? What's its business model? Uh, what industry is it in? Is it in more than one industry? It could po be possible, right? And so you need to uh, make note of that. And then it's economic setting. Is this company a newer company that's still growing? Is it a mature company? Uh, has it had to re um, kind of invent itself? Has it gone into bankruptcy? Those kind of things um, there. This is going to be included in the draft. This is the analysis overview. So it's just basically the background of the company and um, some specific things about it. You're going to be able to find a lot about this out there in the annual report and but on the company's web page and also on other web pages. So make sure to get your sources where you're finding all this stuff and you're going to want to cite your sources on, on this stuff that you're going to be using. Uh, especially for dates and numbers and those things that you're going to be pulling off of places. Cite your sources. So this is the next thing that will be included in the draft, in the draft, and that is the evidential matter. So this is going to be your financial statements, your annual report that I just showed you how to go and find. And so you're going to want to get that information. You want going to want to bring it back, and you're going to want to put it into some formats where you can say see ratios, you can see trends, you can see comparison uh, between year to year quarter to quarter for the company and comparisons with uh, its competitors in its industry and some other statistics for it, right? So it, those might not always be um, statistics that are based in the financial statements. It could be other things. How many employees does it have? Um, uh, what? How many locations does it have, right? Um, all of these things or other statistics may, that may be included in evidential matter to help you analyze the company. So this is just the base setup. This is These are not the answers on should I invest in this company or how is this company doing? We're not quite there yet. And so that's the draft. And so that'll get you there. Um, and we'll talk about the building blocks of analysis later. This is going to be kind of how you can structure it uh, as you go through this and, and put it together. So this will be a little bit of work. Some guidance on this, definitely look at chapter 17. This is our last chapter in the course, but jump ahead and look at it, over uh, review it. You can actually do that chapter now if you want to. You can do the study guide and everything, or study assignment now and everything. Uh, super easy chapter. It's going to be the easiest chapter you're going to do all term long. Uh, it helps us kind of see the beginning from the end because that analysis part is really why we're learning all of this other stuff up front on how to uh, speak accounting, right, and speak the language of business. So let's look, do the other sections here real quick. So we got assumptions. This is going to be um, some assumptions you're going to be making. Uh, it, so the, the idea is you're going to, you could assume some stuff on your own. That's okay. You could also look out at some other analysts that are doing um, some of these analysis that you're, you're going to be able to read and pull from, which is totally fine. You don't have to make all this stuff up yourself. You can go find some stuff. Just make sure you cite it. If there is any assumptions that are out there, like who are their competitors? Um, and really, what's their economic environment? And, and how's the economy going to be doing? And why are they doing certain things? Those are all assumptions. We don't know 100% um, exactly what uh, the company is doing and how it does it always, right? There are some trade secrets. There are some things that are held close. Uh, so you have to make some assumptions about the company. And so if these things aren't published, they may be on other analyst websites. Maybe they're assuming some things as well. That's okay. Put them in here and cite where you got them. Or if you don't cite them, I'm assuming you're making them up yourself, which is fine as well. So there's key factors. That's an area where you're going to be able to it really, these are lists, right, uh, of comparisons. Uh, favorable, unfavorable, quantitative, and qualitative. So uh, 
One thing that we can do here, if you've ever seen a SWOT analysis or strength, weakness, opportunity, threats, you can do this within the key factor area to be able to analyze the company and list some things out and compare them. Uh, anything in a diagram or kind of like a table visual uh, comparisons are great to use. Again, this is gonna be qualitative and quantitative. So some of the key factors are gonna be who's at the head of the company, who's the CEO, what is the management team, um, what are some of the other uh, issues that this company is dealing with other than uh, quantitative things, right? Like for example, um, cash on hand, that's quantitative. Uh, qualitative is gonna be more soft skills and some of the other uh, relations, customer relation type issues that they're gonna be having. So that those are some things. Uh, to list out. So basically what's really important for this company to be good at and how can we look at that and, and kind of analyze are they good at it or are they not? Are they better at it than other companies or are they maybe they have some room for improvement? So that's going to be a good one. Key factors. Inferences. So this one's going to be um, taking your data that you have and looking ahead. Right, so we're, this, these are the forecasts, these are the estimates, these are the interpretations and conclusions. Are, is this company a good one to invest in? How quickly are they gonna grow in the future? Um, how big are they gonna get? Uh, is there some rough um, waters ahead for them, right? Are they maybe gonna have a rough spell? Uh, those are all things that are included in this. This is why we do the uh, ratio analysis, our vertical analysis and our horizontal analysis. That's kind of the quantitative side. Um, if you, you may not have to do this all yourself. You may be able to go out and grab some of this that's already been done. Just cite it. It's okay. If you don't, uh, if you're not going to put it together yourself um, and you're borrowing, just let me know you borrowed it and put it together in a nice analysis paper. That's fine with me. Um, so these are the building blocks of analysis. So this is how we're going to structure the, um, the, the analytical side, right? So our evidential matter, this is how we're gonna structure that. So liquidity and efficiency, so uh, that's gonna be one part. Again, look in chapter 17 for a little deeper dive into some of this stuff. Solvency, liquidity and efficiency, that's that's gonna be pretty, uh, that's pretty apparent, apparent are they, um, how good are they at operating, right? Are they efficient? And uh, are they able to pay current debts, right? How good are they currently? Solvency, this one is based on more like, are they solid? Are they gonna stay in business for a long time? Or do they have um, not a very solid foundation? So is their solvency good? Um, profitability, how profitable are they? Uh, what's their return on investment? What's their profitability uh, margins? Uh, market prospects, this one's gonna be related to their, their stock price and the relation to stock owners. Are they a good deal? If you buy their stock now, is it a good deal? And, and how do we measure that? So there's some stuff in chapter 17 that'll help you do that as well. Number five, this last one is, is gonna be related to some of the other data you're doing, but the format and how you put it. So horizontal analysis is looking at a company over time. So how, how are they doing now versus last year, right? And then the trends into the future. So that's horizontal. We're looking across the years, across the quarter. Vertical analysis, this is, how is, how is the company, um, what's their composition? Right? How do they hold their assets? Uh, what's their, um, how is their debt related to their assets, related to their equity? How is everything composed vertically within a company as we're looking? And vertically, really what we're doing is we're looking at their financial statements, income statement and balance sheet, and we're looking up and down vertically on it, and we're comparing the balance sheet, the assets with the liabilities with the equity, right? And so that's in chapter 17 as well. So that could be useful as well. A lot of this stuff is already done for you out on the internet again for companies. Most companies, you can go out and find some of the horizontal trends and the vertical analysis. Um, they, they also call vertical analysis common size. So common size financial um, analysis. 
And so that's something you can get into. So with this, really the idea is you can get into this as much as possible. So a lot of students ask me, how long should my um, analysis be? Should it be like a 20 page paper? Should it be, uh, is two pages good enough? Well, I'll, I'll, answer, the, the, I'll answer it this way. Um, first of all, scope, cover everything. So have everything lined out so I can look through and say, okay, that you did all of the areas, right? So you got everything covered. So that's scope, right? And then we're looking at scale or depth. And so how deep do we need to have it? Well, this is just the principles of a financial class. I'm not gonna, expecting you to, to write a paper that is equivalent to um, a graduate student or an analyst that's working out there you know, on Wall Street. So I, what, I, what I do want you to have is um, uh, something that, you know, it, one, one sentence paragraphs don't work for me. Write this in paragraph format as much as possible. Give me, give me full sentences and uh, finish your thoughts. Um, a lot of these papers that are good are going to be about five pages long at least. And a lot of uh, students say, well, does that include all the financial statements and everything? Now, a lot of that's appendix stuff, right? So financial analysis uh, papers, five pages. Is it all going to be written? No, there might be some graphics included, some diagrams and whatnot. Uh, uh, that's okay. And so we'll just go with that. And if you have any further questions, contact me and we can discuss um, any questions that you have regarding this and I hope this helps at least get you off on the right foot and maybe get your brain thinking about what company you're going to pick and um, what kind of impact this financial analysis project is going to have for you in learning. It should hopefully get you there and get you to the uh, point where you're going to be able to learn uh, in real life with a real company how these numbers fall in line to answer some important questions for us. So thanks. We'll talk to you later. Bye.